Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at a programming exercise. So there are other programming languages such as MATLAB and Octave and they are used for mathematical programming also. So these programming languages, MATLAB and Octave, they have a function fix. And this function rounds each element of the input x to the nearest integer towards zero. So this essentially truncates the numbers in x by to integers by removing the decimal portion of each number. So for positive numbers, the behavior of fix is the same as floor, and for negative numbers, the behavior of fix is the same as ceiling. Now, when I'm talking about integers here, I'm just talking about them in the numerical sense, rather the data type. So we'll just keep things simple here. Uh, this presentation is really aimed towards students of mathematics and engineering and first year computer science who are just sort of getting started in this in programming and mathematical computing. Just as a quick remark, I'm using Jupyter Notebooks, as you can see there at the top, and I'm using Julia version 1.6.1. .1. Okay, now the exercise here is write a function that replicates fix, uh, implements fix in Julia. So what we have here is our test inputs, A, B, and C, two single values, A and B, one positive, one negative, and also C, which is a vector there, a four element vector, which comprises a mixture of negative numbers and positive numbers. Okay, now it actually says it's a float and we're also talking about integers. We're not really focusing on types here. It's just the outputs, the numerical outputs rather than the types. Okay, so there we go, uh, A and B. So let's just check the floor function and ceiling function. So what I'm gonna do there is write a combined function that just gives you the floor function and ceiling function of A. The floor function there of a is minus two, the ceiling function there is minus one, okay? Whereas for b, which is a positive number, the floor function is two, point, is two and the ceiling is three. So it's the integers on either side of b on the number line. And yeah, that's it. Just as a quick remark, you notice that I am putting in a dot there and that's important to emphasize that. So if there's no dot, really the function is just intended for single inputs, okay? Uh, which A is a single value input. Uh, when you put in the dot, it's an element wise calculation. That means you can put in multiple numbers and it will give you a value for each one, okay? Give you the output for each one. So let's just check that with floor C, okay? I'll deliberately um, break it this time. So it doesn't give us any values, okay? That's because we are providing multiple values to a single input function. But when we put in the dot there, it broadcasts it, so to speak. It carries out the function on each of the inputs, okay? Now, so that's floor and ceiling, okay? Some useful commands are the absolute value function, okay, 1.1, so, and the sine function, okay? Sine of zero is zero. I just meant to make a comment on that later on. The sine of a is minus one, okay? So the absolute value of a function times the sine of the function will give you the, the, uh, the, the return to your initial value if you want. That's just, they're, so they're very useful working with them in combination. Uh, let's try that out for the C, the four vector, four element vector, okay? and just see that we have the dots there, okay? That's great. So what I'm gonna do here now is use these in combination. So we have the floor of the absolute, func uh, absolute value of A, that gives us one. Okay, so essentially what we have to do is figure out a way of using these in combination, okay? Now that's not the answer I'm looking for, but what I can do there is return, uh, multiply by its sign, and we get one, okay? Uh, let's do this again for B, and you notice I'm putting in the dots there, okay? So this will work for B, no problem. It, uh, the, when you put in the dots, it can take a single input. There we are, 2.0. But just watch out for this. Be vigilant, I'm, I'm about to do something wrong. Okay, I need a dot here at the multiple, at the multiplication op operator there, okay? So that actually gives us what we want, okay? So essentially we're ready to write our function now, okay? We don't have to worry too much about types. 
I'm happy enough just to take this as the output, just the numerical values, okay? Now, correctly, it's essentially, they are numerically the same as integers, and as far as I'm concerned, that's all we need. So here's our function, okay? So the function, uh, uh, to, call, to, to define the function, called fix, which has a default input of zero, and this is our calculation there that we just devised, okay? And then the end statement there at the end, okay? So fix of A, minus one, fix of B, two, and fix of C. There we go. Now, just something that you can, for extra emphasis, you can put in the dot there as well, okay? I'm slightly over-exaggerating that, um, that issue of having the dots around the place just to sort of uh, account for multiple value inputs. But it, if you're not familiar that with that from other programming languages, let's say you're coming from Python or R, this is something you have to get used to. So I'm sort of overdoing it with the dots, okay? Okay, that's grand, we'll leave that there.